The Seahawks and Lions game this past weekend was one of the most entertaining matches so far this season. It was big play after big play, and even though Seattle took an early lead which they never gave up, Jared Goff kept it dangerously close all the way to the end. While there are many stories one can write from this game, these stories can range from Shane Waldron's play calling to Geno Smith's incredible performance to the awful defensive play on both sides of the field, the one I wanted to focus on for this video was how DK Metcalf completely terrorized Jeff Okuda through the air. This game was supposed to be a big test for Okuda. For those that don't know, Okuda has played very well in 2022 after struggling during his first two seasons. Instead of being this back and forth battle I imagined, straight up, it was all DK from start to finish. Now, before we begin this breakdown, if you can do me a huge favor and like and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So anyways, I want to start by talking about the Lions defense. From a scheme standpoint, the Lions decided to place sides against the Seahawks receivers. What I mean by that is they had one cornerback responsible for the left side of the field while the other cornerback lined up on the opposite. While intuitively this makes sense given that players have preferences on the side of the field they want to cover, most defenses don't actually do this. Most teams will swap their cornerbacks based on matchup or simply based on the coverage that they called. This was actually true for the Lions for the first three games. The Lions were more than happy to switch their cornerbacks back and forth where Okuda would travel and play on both the left and the right sides of the field. Now in this game, the exact opposite occurred. Jeff Okuda lined up as the right cornerback, which is the cornerback that lines up on the offense's left side, and he did that for 58 of his 59 snaps as an outside cornerback. This means that if DK Metcalf didn't line up on the left side of the offense, or if he simply lined up in the slot, then Okuda wouldn't be responsible for covering him. My theory for why the Lions did this in this game is based on how the Seahawks game plan their offense. The Seahawks are mainly a right-handed team. This means they put their tight end on the right side of the line of scrimmage. In this formation, they'll put their X receiver or DK Metcalf in this case on the back side. Will Disley, for example, has only lined up attached to the formation on the left on roughly 10% of his snaps. He's mainly a right side tight end. So knowing this about the Seahawks offense, the Lions game plan to put Jeff Okuda on DK's side of the field. They wanted them to face off and face off they did. For my tracking, they faced each other on 14 snaps in this game. While that may not seem like a lot, Remember, if a defense plays any sort of zone coverage or DK lines up in the slot, then Okuda likely won't cover him after the snap. Also, those 14 plays I mentioned, most were in man coverage. One of those snaps happened in the middle of the second quarter. This is your perfect example of a solo battle between these two players. From the offense perspective, Gino was lining up in shotgun in a 3x2 alignment. That means he has three receivers on the strong side of the formation to the right, while he has two receivers on the weak side or the bottom of your screen. The Seahawks ran a concept called drive from the strong side while they paired that concept with a backside go and out combination. From the quarterback's perspective, the go route is your alert throw on this play. If Geno likes the matchup before the snap, he will see the release and you'll take a shot at the sideline in the hopes to get the ball to the receiver before the free safety can come down. If he doesn't like this initial look, then Geno will move on to the drive portion of the play. He can then work the shallow cross as his first read, then he'll move on to the dig over the middle of the defense. Looking at this from the defense's perspective, the Lions have a single high safety on the field. They were playing cover one with a fire zone blitz from Aiden Hutchinson underneath. If all went according to plan, this is actually a very good play call. Since Hutchinson would theoretically drop for the shallow cross, he might surprise Gino and be ready for a throw to break it up. However, as this video is obviously about DK Metcalf and Jeff Okuda, we all know what happened next. After the snap, DK took one step to square up Okuda and then he started to sprint towards the outside of the cornerback. DK patiently waited for Okuda to extend a hand to ride his route towards the sideline. Watch how violent DK was with his hand fighting. He timed his strike perfectly. He smacked Okuda's outstretched arm, landing his hit perfectly at his elbow, and this completely threw the cornerback by. At this point, DK already had this play won. He accelerated past the now beaten cornerback, and he was open for a big play down the sideline. DK finished the play, gaining 54 yards on the route. Before we look at our next example, today's sponsor is Mojo, a sports stock market that lets you invest in the careers of athletes. Mojo is the holy grail for sports fans. It gives you the chance to cash in on your passion and truly invest in what you know and love. Instead of reading boring financial statements, you can pick players and track their share price as it rises and falls in real time. Mojo also has their published guaranteed payout formula and it's based on objective stats so you always know what the stock is worth. The app currently offers over 300 skilled players from the NFL across quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. If you think a rookie is underrated and about to break out, go long on that player and profit based on your knowledge. Mojo is available in New Jersey on iOS and by just downloading the app, you have the chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Click the link in the description for a chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Must be 21 plus and physically located in New Jersey to trade on Mojo. Have a gambling problem? Help is available at 1-800-GAMBLER. 
Back to the breakdown, here's another play where Metcalf and Akutu face each other one-on-one. -on -one. This play happened in the third quarter. This was another one where DK simply outmuscled Akuda for a big gain on the field. Watch how perfectly Geno Smith threw this pass. The placement was incredible. But not only was the throw good, but DK's use of his size and strength to create that last second separation is exactly what makes him so good. Now earlier, I mentioned that DK Metcalf and Jeff Okuda faced each other in 14 snaps during this game. 11 of those were in some form of man coverage. Even on a couple plays where the Lions called zone for the rest of the defense, they adjusted and called a man coverage element for Akuda in order for him to face Metcalf by himself. For example, in this play, the rest of the defense is lining up in zone. This is called cover three solo. That means everyone is playing cover three, except for the backside cornerback who is playing man coverage. Now, by my tracking, out of the 14 snaps that they faced each other, DK Metcalf was targeted a grand total of four times. On those plays, Akuto allowed three receptions for 101 yards, but he was able to break up a pass. This throw happened on a first and 10 in the fourth quarter. The Lions were playing cover one man, while DK was running a shallow cross after the offense ran play action. This play is pretty much designed to get DK the ball in space. Usually with a tight end close to the formation on the left, the cornerback will be out leveraged from the snap. This is a classic play in Sean McVay's offense, which is exactly where Shane Waldron learned this concept from. Okuda did a fantastic job of recovering on this play. After getting wide initially after the snap, he was able to drive perfectly on the route. How he timed his dive to break up the pass is really well done. And yes, you can make the argument that DK kind of slowed down just a bit and the pass could have been thrown in front of the receiver, but we also need to give credit to the defense. This is an incredibly difficult play to cover and Okuda definitely saved himself on this one. After going through all the plays from this game, I think my main takeaway from watching this was how aggressive the lines were. Even when their man coverage concepts weren't working, they were more than happy to keep calling them anyways, and they even layered in some blitzes. I counted multiple cover zero all out blitzes, and against most offenses, this type of aggression might have actually worked. However, Geno Smith completely balled out in this game. He stared down the face of danger, knowing he was about to get hit, and he trusted his receivers to make the play. Even when the Lions attempted to double his main receiving threats in DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, Geno once again saved the day. He did such a good job of taking the game to his hands. This is a big reason why he gained 49 yards on the ground. He had two excellent scrambles for 30 yards. On top of this, Shane Waldron was more than happy to use him on a couple QB design runs as well. Pretty much everything went right for the Seahawks offense. If the Lions did a good job and took away Geno's first and second read, he just moved on to his third read or his check down. On top of that, the play calling on third down was excellent. There were multiple plays where Waldron anticipated exactly how the defense would react. If Waldron didn't have a solution, then Geno's quick passing and his excellent use of legs were enough. I really only saw one real mistake from Geno in this game, and that's when he missed Dwayne Eskridge down the field for a huge throw in a corner route. This is a spot concept, and Eskridge is wide open deep down the field. The ball should have been his. However, Geno trusts DK to a fault, and he simply waited for him to get open. You obviously can't complain because it worked, but in the future, you just hope that Geno will make this throw to Eskridge. Regardless, outside of this play and a couple of slightly inaccurate throws, Geno was perfect, and this is why he deserved to win the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Going back to Jeff Okuda, this was a really tough game. I guarantee he'll learn a lot from this one. Once he refines his hand fighting technique, I bet we'll see a much better matchup in the future. For now though, the Lions game was a clear win for DK Metcalf. The dude is incredible, and even when he has to leave the field to stop himself from exploding, he still comes back with vengeance. Well, that's all I have for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel directly, feel free to follow the link to my Patreon account below. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.